Cool. Well, essentially, it's it's my band, obviously by the name, but um, they're session musicians. Quite a few bands in Scotland work like this. Actually, you've got your kind of you know, especially when they're based around a solo instrument um, with accompanying instruments. So. They're session musicians, which means that I pay them and they don't take any risk that's involved. For example, with the album that I've just recorded, they've not put any of their own money in or anything like that. So I've put all the money in and I've paid them a session fee when they've recorded it, just given it to them the day after they, they've done it. And then when I make money off the album, it all comes to me. Does that mean you're out of pocket until you start to make money from the album? Um, yeah, it does. Yeah. So, but it means that they're not out of pocket, and it kind of means that they kind of want to work for me, I guess, as well. It kind of keeps them sweet, if that's, I'm not sure if that's a good term or not, but, um, I mean, they also share things like royalties as well. They take a wee bit of a share of royalties out of the music that I uh, write. Once the royalty money comes in, I'll give them a small percentage of that, because although they're session musicians, they've put a lot of their own into our arrangements and things like that, you know, chord patterns and things like that. And I kind of want to reward them for that. And it's kind of the kind of way that things should work. And are you quite yeah. happy taking that risk yourself? Yeah, it just means that I don't, that I don't have to worry about things, that if they're making money off the album, you know, if it doesn't sell, it's me that's made the kind of mistake or whatever. They don't have to worry about it. They'll always get paid no matter what. And is there ever a time where, the, where you think that they would like to have more of a a take on it or, a, or an input to um, it or... I guess it could get to the stage where if we were kind of out on a big tour or something like that and we were selling a lot of albums and things like that they might kind of get a wee bit oh she's making a lot of money out of this and things like that but then you know if I do sell a lot of albums at gigs I'll top up their fee a little bit as well you know what I mean because the way that they've played has helped sell those albums and is that the way, presumably that's not the way bands, but I mean, if it's a genuine band mm -hmm. that doesn't have a name attached to it like yours yeah. does, is it more of a kind of democracy? Yeah, more of a democracy. And some people take more kind of stuff to do with like booking and things like that. If you've got someone who does all the booking, you know, all the admin stuff, they'll sometimes take a percentage more out of gig fees mm -hmm. and things. But generally, yeah, most, a lot of bands where it's not centred around one kind of person or solo instrument, they tend to split things three ways, which can get a little bit kind of touchy at times because sometimes folk can think that they're doing more work than the other people and things like that, so I kind of prefer having all the control out of this project. And is that the advice you would give to somebody starting off, that, that that's um, the best way to operate things? Well, I think if you're kind of known as a solo musician and you're wanting to go to a band where it's kind of, you know, you're the main solo instrument or you're the main instrument, it's it is a kind of good way to do it, I guess. That's it's how I like to do it anyway. Yeah, I think if I was in a band with other people and um, it was kind of more of an equal share and things like that, I'd be willing to kind of do the equal share thing instead. Tell us a little bit about you and how well you manage your, your finances. Cool. Well, um, I do kind of manage them. Well, I'm quite lucky in that I do a lot of. Um, teaching as well. I kind of see my kind of life as kind of like a 50-50 split between teaching and playing, which means I know that I have a regular income every month. I go over to the Isle of Man once a month and I know exactly how much money I'm going to get in from that. Um, and I teach for two, just two and a half hours actually for Eastern Bartonshire Council. So I know I'm going to get money in from that every month. And then my private teaching as well. So I know that I've always got money coming in, which is good. Um, and that generally kind of continues throughout the summer. In the summer I'll have more gigs than I will with the private teaching, so I kind of know that there's always coming, money coming in, but I always look ahead in the diary as well to see, you know, what gigs are coming in and what money's coming in if I've got to have a little bit more extra. And I know, you know, when I have big bills every year, you know, whether it's like the car MOT or car insurance and things like that, or house insurance and things, then it's going to come in. What about provision for the future? Um, yeah, I need to sort that out a little bit. I would say I don't have a pension and now I'm kind of at the stage where I'm like, I really should have a pension. So that is in the kind of back of my mind. Um, I have savings now. Um, I came into a bit of money um, through family stuff, which I want to put away to save and, you know, kind of invest a little bit for the future because I am aware that although I have an okay ba balance just now, it's not anything that's going to tie me over. 
you know, when I'm an OEP with a, you know, walking stick walking around and a harp on the other shoulder. <laughs> so you're quite organised then as a, a musician? Yeah, generally, yeah, I would say. More so than I think a lot of people, but that's because I've got my regular teaching, I would say.